Buying or selling? Capital. Good luck to you. Back again, eh? It's free to their travels, friend. worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. They don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit you a ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Keeping it together, Bree. I'm all right. It's that was Safe among friends. Never forget it. How are you holding up? Not in any mood to talk about it. Smells worse over here than a dozen rotten eggs dropped in a vat of vinegar. Then don't come over. Not like you're buying anything. If I don't come visit you a ton, who will? Wouldn't you like to know? Talk about it. Less than the wisdom of the ancients. Ah. Vapid fiction along the large helping of hair. Smells worse over here than a d
years of my success. The Meister sits slumped in her chair. You notice that some of her scales have dropped to the floor. What news? Can you channel enough source? Are you powerful enough to proceed? Blessed news! Now hurry. Gather the source you need from the fountain and perform the ritual again. The Meister sits slow. What news? Can you channel- oh, Of course. My supply has rather- You can find more in the cloister woods to the northwest of Driftwood. Then why, pray tell? As you suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts to swim and cloud. 
There is an intense pounding in your head, and you can feel the world fading. As the world fades away, you lose all sense of being grounded. You reach out, but you could feel yourself falling slowly, sinking into the depths of your own soul. As you approach, Zorstissa greets you with outstretched arms, though her face is marred by a pained grimace. My, my, Red Prince. How you positively brim with sauce. No wonder, after all the adventures you have had, all the things you've had to do. Oh, it's naught but a chill. Be drafty in your soul, that's all. You should. A sudden shudder jolts through her body so violently that she drops to her knees, stunned into silence. She whispers, there really is no need for your assistance, but from the weight of her arms around you, you can tell she'd have trouble getting back up by herself. An ancient curse escapes from her lips, spoken so forcefully that for a brief moment all light recedes into the webs of darkness. I have told you before, the void is stronger than ever. But so are you. I can sense the expanse of source inside you. You are ready to learn the spell I've yearned to teach you. The spell you will need when we reach the Well of Ascension. I have given you eyes that see the source. Now I will give you the teeth to take it. Zor Stissa smiles, and you notice for the first time two vampire-like fangs glistening beneath her upper lip. A gulf of magic envelops you, and you feel a sudden insatiable hunger for source. Go on. I am here for you. Give in to your hunger. Yes. Relish in your lust for power, just like a god should. Go on. Devour me. Though your spell tore through her like a spear through flesh, Zolstissa looks grimly happy, if haggard. You speak the spell with brash ferocity, like I knew you would, my prince. Oh, do you still not see? Even though you are a god woken, destined to be a god, let me tell you the one truth about what it means to be a god. It is to be the lion in a world of lambs. It is about power, and power is not given. It is taken. With your all-seeing eyes and your all-consuming teeth. You can see the souls of the dead, and now you can feed from them to your hungry heart's content. So, feed, 
for you will starve until you finally feast upon the Well of Ascension. Play coy if you must, but sheer hunger will soon trump your all too delicate feelings. Your soul must grow bigger still, your inner self become a vaster expanse, so that it may house divinity. There are more masters of the source, more aspects of the source to learn. The hunt continues, my prince. Just you hurry. Go hence. Look. Lucky find. Majesties, be under no illusion. Quick work is imperative to our success. The Lady Dallas commands no less for this important dig.
Slowly does it first meet truth. The silent watcher smiles at you. Closer inspection reveals the wide rictus grin to be nothing more than red ragged scars ripped into the corners of his mouth. His eyes hold untold pain, yet his mouth smiles on. Those whites are hypocrites, every last one of them. The spirit of an elven woman holds her palms upward. A hesitant, peacemaking gesture, she steps forward and suddenly jerks to a halt. One of her hands moves to her stomach. It comes away, coated in a silvery spectral blood. She looks right through you to her murderer. Her expression drowns in confusion and shock. Her knees buckle. She drops to the floor soundlessly. The spirit of a man cowers on the floor of the cell, his head tucked down. 
An unseen hand yanks his head up by the hair. His wide, panicked eyes find his tormentor. His lips part to plead. But before he can, a slash opens across his throat. Ghostly silver sprays forth. His eyes bulge. He clutches his hands around his neck and pitches forward to the ground, twitching. Her hands clasped together, the spirit of a woman mumbles silent prayers to herself. Unseen hands force her to her knees. Her lips move more rapidly. There's a faint sound next to you, like an echo, the metallic rasp of a sword being unsheathed. Your hand passes through the spirit, but with a little resistance. For a moment, you connect with her. The woman's spirit seems to sense it also. She looks up, oddly serene, and locks eyes with you. Her lips part to say something. Am I dead? Are you a god? An echoing swish heralds a blur of silver passing through the spirit's neck, back to front. Her head topples forward, followed by the rest of her a brief moment later. The spirit of a dwarf raises his fists against an unseen foe. He silently curses at them and throws a punch. The spirit strikes out at thin air near the cell door. The spirit pivots, sensing another assailant. He draws a fist back again and suddenly freezes, his back arching in silent agony. He sinks to his knees, otherworldly silver blood blossoming from a wound between his shoulder blades. Those whites are hypocrites, every last one of them. This flesh is well past ripe. Whatever memories it once held are now gone. To question orders. Dallas found what she was looking for, and she has ordered them. You shut your eyes tight. Sheer terror courses through you, cut short by a length of razor sharp steel passing through your neck. Your surroundings somersault around you. You find yourself lying on your side, gazing up at the curious sight of your own decapitated body, teetering off its knees to the floor. Everything grows dark. Do these three really need to be killed? They could still serve the order well. Silence. It is not for you to question orders. Paladin Hardwin's whistle-like device sits nestled in your hand. You hear the sound of fluttering wings. 
Two white magisters are discussing the fate of three magically bound captives. Captives clad in the dark shroud of the Black Ring. Noticing your arrival, the magisters step back and take hold of their weapons. You. Ah, yes, I remember your scaly features from Driftwood. Shouldn't have come here, you silly little sod. Indeed. And your presence is most unwelcome. What you are is another body for the rats. Hope they leave some for me. The two Magisters whistle up their source hounds and advance upon you, deadly intent darkening their expressions. Those whites are hypocrites. Every last one of them. Whites are hypocrites, every last one of them. Paladin Hardwinds whistle, you hear the sound of fluttering. Two white magisters are discussing you. Indeed. And your presence is... Ah, of course. We have to get moving, Raymond. The two magisters whistle up their source hounds and advance... Paladin Hardwinds whistle, you hear the sound of fluttering wings. Paladin Hardwind's whistle-like device sits nestled in... You hear the sound of fluttering wings.
those whites are hypocrites. Every last one of them. Take them down.
lot have outlived your usefulness. Not have outlived your usefulness.
lot of outlived rules for us. between us and this lunatic! The spirit sways from foot to foot as if dazed from a fist fight. He looks right through you, hollow eyes empty and endless, the fugilin color of the void. The tiniest glimmer of light flickers in them, then dies out. Gazing into his eyes, you see the tiny spark of source flicker again. Catching it like a pearl, you see a reflection on its surface. The spirit as a younger man. You see him joining the black ring, zealous and proud. You see his commander, a shadowy, horrifying figure that seems to flit in and out of existence. You see the recruit's determined eyes, heading for battle with the Magisters. You see him captured by Dallas, chained and leashed. You see him deep in a cave, using Source to break through a magical barrier, trying, failing, trying again, failing in exhaustion. The Source Pearl you gaze into grows dark and disappears. You are left with the endless blackness, blacker than black, of the spirit's depthless eyes. The Aetheran. The Aetheran, it spoke to me, called me to it. But I can't sense it anymore. Where is it? Oh, where could it be? The spirit gazes around, clearly looking for something, but does not register your presence at all. The spirit grins as he sees you, a grin that contains madness, or something as close to it as makes no difference. So, are you a servant to the king, here to bring me back? He laughs bitterly. I've got time. I can wait. Paladin Hardwin's whistle-like device sits nestled in your hand. Wings flutter. A war owl swoops. It plucks the letter from your hand and flies away.
Junk. Thank you. 
is mine. Mind! 